Hey, it's Emmett with Clawhammer Supply, and today we're going to do a quick overview of our 1650 watt PID digital controller. Uh, the model number is CHS120. We will have the full manual on our website if you want to dig into it a little bit deeper, but this overview should go over the basic features that you'll need. We have a built-in GFCI plug on the controller, and this is just to make sure everybody's safe. We're always brewing and distilling around liquid. You have your test button, your reset button, uh, your standard GFCI plug, just plugs directly into your standard outlet. So basically we got uh, our on off button, we got a heat input, a pump input, our controller uses a PT100 temperature probe. This is waterproof, so you can use it to measure liquid. Important to note, the temperature probe needs to be plugged into the controller. If it's unplugged, you will get an error and you'll get beeping. So make sure that is plugged in. And then this temperature probe will just slide into your thermal well and that will read the temperature of your kettle or your still, whatever you're using it for. So make sure your probe is inserted into the kettle. If you want to set a set point, right now you can see on the controller, we're at 150 degrees. If we wanted to change that to 152, we're just going to arrow up and you'll see the cursor blinking. And then you're just going to arrow over until you're at the zero there. And then you can change that to 152 and then you hit the set button. And that'll go for any temperature. So if you wanted to mash at 152, 72 for whatever reason you would just hit set and there's your set point really nice thing about the controller is you can easily switch to uh, a percentage of power mode to switch to manual mode or percentage of power mode just hold down the am button uh, which is also the left arrow key and you'll see that there is an upside down a button just hit the set button and that'll permanently keep you in that mode and then to change it down to 80%, same thing, push the up arrow until you see your cursor flashing. And then we're gonna drop down, oops, we're gonna, I went over too far, so we're gonna go down to 80 and hit set. So that's gonna be at 80%. Um, and if you wanna switch back to a percentage uh, value, just hold the AM button again, hit the set button, and you're back in a set value mode. Also, the heat button and the pump button Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the pump, we'll turn the pump on and off. And the heat button, same thing. It's not gonna supply heat to the heating element unless you have the heat button turned on. Um, the nice thing about having the dedicated buttons is if you're cooling work and here at the end of the brew day, you can still read the temperature and still be recirculating but not have the heat on. Um, which works out really well. One other thing folks may want to do um, is do an auto-tune on the system. If you are going to do an auto-tune, um, I suggest filling the kettle with the normal amount you're going to be brewing with. If you're going to be doing five and a half gallon finished batches, you know, your seven and a half, eight gallon starting liquid, fill the kettle up. And I always like to heat it up to about 140 and I'll set my set value at 150. So you can see here, I'm gonna drop this down to 150, and that's just a pretty generic mash temperature. Um, and I like to heat it up to 140, we're pretty close to that. And then what I would do is turn my heat on, and I always like to turn my pump on during this stage as well, um, just to recirculate, kind of mimic uh, mash a little bit um, while you're mashing the grains. In order to do a auto tune, Hold the set button for about three seconds. That's gonna get you into the sub menu. So hold that down for three seconds. And then you'll see you go, you see a 1P there. And then you hit set again, you get to the OP menu. So once you at that, hit the AM button. And then here you can see control is set to PID. By default, the PID setting works really well. If you really wanna dial your system in, you can do this auto tune process. So switch it off of PID, hit the up button. And then you'll see there, we got the AT. And then once you are at AT, that stands for auto tune. Hit the set button. And then you can just exit out. And then you'll see on the screen, it's flashing AT. And this can take anywhere from about five minutes to an hour. It kind of just depends. 
basically the system's gonna heat up past 150, cool back down below 150, it'll turn the element back on, heat up past it, and it basically just figures out how much energy it needs to exert to basically hit that set point. So by default, the PID settings we use are, are pretty dialed in, uh, but again, if you're getting a little bit of fluctuation, you just wanna dial them a little bit better, the auto-tune works really well. So basically, I'll just let this sit here until it's done. When it's done, the AT just stops flashing. Uh, this controller is already tuned, so I'm just gonna cancel it real quick. And to cancel it, you would just go back into your OP settings and change it from AT back to PID. Also in this screen, since we're here, R, if you do uh, auto-tune and you're not happy with the results, R will reset the PID settings back to the factory. Um, so that's nice if you screw around with it and you're not happy with the settings, you can just revert it back to the default factory settings. So I'm gonna put this back to PID and that is simply how you do an auto-tune except you'd let it run through all the way. By default, the controller comes in Fahrenheit because we're based in the United States and that's what we use. So that's what we defaulted it to. Um, if you're in Canada or use Celsius, you can easily change it to read uh, in Celsius. And same thing, you're gonna hold the set button down to get to the sub menu. And then you're gonna hit the set button to scroll down until you get to the unit, hit the AM button. And you can see here we have an F to change it to Celsius. Just hit the up button and hit set. And then you can see we switched to Celsius and now we're reading uh, in Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Another feature I use a lot is the audible alarm. I'll use this when I set a match temperature and the controller will just alert me when I'm at my set point. So for this demonstration, um, our set value is gonna be 151 and I'm gonna set the alarm to 151. So as soon as the controller reaches 151.1, the alarm will trigger and then I can come out of the office or if I'm at home doing something else, I know I'm at mash temp. Really convenient. Uh, in order to set this up, hold the set button, three seconds sub to get to the sub menu. Scroll through to the ALP, that's the alarm sub menu, hit the AM button. We wanna change the node to one, that'll turn on the audible alarm. And then we're gonna set the high value right here to uh, 151. And that way, once we're at our temp, the controller will let us know and we can continue with the brew day. So 151, we're, you can see we're currently at 150.4. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our heat back on. I've turned it off just for demonstration purposes. So as soon as this is up to 151.1, uh, we will hear the audible alarm. All right, so we just hit our alarm temp and uh, in order to turn it off, you can just hit the set button and that will shut off the alarm. But again, it's, it's not annoyingly loud, but it's loud enough you can hear it in the next room, which is great. And then if you want to turn the alarm off so it's no longer um, coming on, you can just switch the node back to zero and then um, you're good on the alarm. All right, guys, that's a basic overview of our 120 volt, 1650 watt controller. If you have any other questions, we'll have the full manual on our website and a PDF. And you can also shoot us an email, give us a call, check out our products on our website, which is clawhammersupply.com. And we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.